What? We started. Oh, oh crap. Okay, folks, okay, calm down. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking, okay? I didn't, like, switch camps or anything. So just calm down. Take it easy. Calm down. Take a breather. Okay? All right? Are we ready? Are we, are we, are we ready, though? Okay, so, so here's the thing. You have to follow me really carefully, though, all right? So listen. I've read a couple of things here or there. Or like from last week, the week before that, and some other stuff here and there. And I think, okay, stay with me, stay with me. I think that the UK press, the media, okay, they know something about Catherine that we don't know. And I think that that something is that, oh my gosh, I don't dare to say it. I, I don't, oh, uh, I'm not sure because, like, I'm, listen, I think she's a saint. What? What do you mean you can't hear me? Okay, get closer, get closer. I can't see this out loud. Yes, get closer. I think she's a saint. Yeah, you heard me. No, I'm wrong? You sure? Listen, 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 though. I, I... Listen, I've been a good person. You know, I, I've gone to church when I had to. I've done my good deeds. I've put up with a lot of crap. I've forgiven people. I've like, you know, I want to go to heaven, man. I want to go to heaven when it's my turn. I don't want to make any mistakes. And what if she is a saint? Because if you follow the British media, I mean, you, you can't come to any other conclusion that we're dealing with a saint. And and I, look, listen, this is not like me trying to be mean to anything. This is just me talking about the press. The press gives us information, information that we need to consume and digest and come up with our like, you know, our, our 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 answers to our questions and as per the information that I have read and I have collected and I've, I've gone through I think she's a saint I don't know the Vatican has not they have not said anything the Church of England have not said anything but I'm calling it she's a saint that's all I'm saying why are all of you so angry at me right now I don't understand she's not okay so I should go and reevaluate and stop. Oh, I should stop reading the UK press and listening to their commentaries on their shows. And they, they're, they're very sad and pathetic. And she's just been so brave. And it's, it's just an example of how she has fought this battle for all of us. It's put us to shame. We should put a mirror in front of us and, and really realize that what she's done she's told us about our evils she's put a mirror in front of the the touches of sussex megan and and showed megan how horrible she's been because megan is to be blamed for all of this all of this is her fault okay buddy i think you need to calm the heck down <laughs> great that's a parody, by the way. Parody, parody, parody. Nothing to do with, um... Uh... Catherine's diagnosis. It's just a parody about the media. It's a parody, a comedy, a sketch, if you want to call it that, about how the media elaborates on their stories. Because I don't want to bring this up or say anything, but... but you know, when when my mom was going through with her with her with her cancer, and I, I I usually many times I say when when we, right? Because we dealt with, uh, oof, we dealt with it as a family, right? And I'll tell you, I love I love my mama. I love my mom with with all with Mira, mi mama, 
she's everything to me. And I'm not I'm not a mother's boy, by the way. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. She's my mom. She's always said she goes, you, you, you're very independent. You never, you never let us do anything for you. I was like, yeah, so? <laughs> that means you've been a good, a good parent. Um, it was tough. It was very, very tough. You know, we live in a country where I, we, we are very fortunate that our healthcare system is very similar to the UK's. And I'll tell you folks two quick stories. My, my, my dad, I think I told you folks this a, uh, a, a while back. My, my dad went to his family, his family doctor a couple of times. He wasn't feeling well. The family doctor did some exams, didn't think anything was wrong. And, you know, my dad was, he was home. He, he, it's something he said, he said, he said, I'm not, something is wrong. I'm not well. And when I, I my you know, my father doesn't complain about stuff like that. And I said, okay, we're going back to the doctor tomorrow. We're going back. And we went back and he did this extra, whatever he did extra, and immediately he called he called an, an ambulance. And my dad was taken in immediately to one of the top um, um, cardiac um, treatment hospitals in, in the city and was operated within hours. Um, he had a quadruple bypass. Um, and you know, it did. It didn't. It didn't ruin us. It didn't put us in ruins or anything. We pay our taxes, and um, as a benefit of of of, um, of of that, I'm not saying our healthcare system is perfect, but um, you know, we didn't have to worry about that at all. So when my mom was diagnosed with 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 her with her um, with 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 the cancer, and you know, the solutions that were ahead of us. Uh, you know, you'll never understand. I think, as 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 a guy, as as a person whose gender is male, um, fully understand the relationship that any person, a woman may have with her uterus, has with with her body. It's it's her body, right? It's period. It's her body, right? I mean, I think maybe that what I just said was kind of kind of moronic and stupid. Right, but but uh, what I'm trying to say is that you know there's all these people trying to tell women what to do with their bodies and all this kind of stuff, and 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 they have no no clue whatsoever. Right, I don't want anyone coming and tell me what to do with my body. Well, except my doctor, then you know we'll we'll discuss it. But my mom, when they said you know we we think because this is a the cancer you have it it. Once it starts to spread, it's going to, be, it's going to go wild. And when the option is said, we need to operate and take your uterus out. And I mean, it's not like my mom was expecting to have any more children. Um, but I could see that the sort of this... Oh, and that was tough, watch, watching her face just kind of... I, I would say it almost, it aged her. It really did. It aged her. And so I take this stuff very serious. I, I know what it did to, 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 to my family. I, I know what it, what it does to many families. Right? And the way the British media is treating this is just absolutely laughable. I'm not doing a parody to make fun of Kate Middleton. By no means. I, I, I have respect for the human being. I have respect for people. I may not agree with the things they do. I'll call them out on it. I, I'll, 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 e I'll even be harsh about it. I'll be angry about it even. But I am a human being walking this earth and understand that everything has its compl complications to it. But the way they're dealing with this and the way they, they, they are making her into this saint. What, what, what? Okay, enough about that. Let me get down to what I wrote. 
those of us who have come through the years, we begin to realize, I think all of us do, at a certain stage of our lives, what life has really meant to us and the value of that life. And if we didn't do that, we we're absolutely out of our minds. And particularly when we get to an age like 70 something, darling, life has just begun. <laughs> I'm having more fun now. I don't have a man in my life. It's not that kind of <laughs> But it's not that kind of thinking that I'm thinking about. It's the real value of life that you greatly appreciate. Life is not problematical. We make it problematical. Because we're all listening to something to someone else, to some thing, without listening to ourselves. We buy a lot of junk, for instance, that we know damn well we don't need. <laughs> we clutter up our lives with insignificant things that have no value at all. But when we start to think about how simple life is and how simple it should be lived, then we begin to realize, I have no problem. I don't have a real problem. The problem is something you make. Life is something you live. Don't the one and only Eartha Kitt. What, what an incredible woman. Um, I used to think that she was my mom. Um, I watched her, uh, I was a kid, and um, we were getting reruns of um, Batman. So that's how I knew of her. And I used to think, I said, you know, she looks like my mom. But then again, I used to think that Diane Carroll also looked like my mom. I used to think that Oprah looks like my mom. I was like, my dad is like, you have a problem. <laughs> All right. In the complex tapestry of media narratives, the UK press has often found itself at the crossroads between journalism and sensationalism. The portrayal of Catherine, Princess of Wales, and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, serves as a glaring example of this dichotomy revealing a penchant for creating stories that adhere less to journalistic standards and more to the creation of characters fit for a dramatized narrative. Catherine, once subjected to her fair share of media scrutiny, rang in from invasive commentary on her family financial status or relentless speculation about her husband's infertility has been rebranded in the eyes of the press. Gone are the days of critical examination. In its place, a narrative befitting of a saint, painting her as a delicate deity, immune to the worldly struggles that once made headlines. This transformation, while seemingly positive, raises questions about the motives behind such a shift and the implications it has for genuine discourse. Conversely, Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, has been cast in the role of the antagonist in this media-manufactured drama. The same outlet that have conveniently forgotten their critical coverage of Catherine now fervently dig for a fabricated controversy surrounding Megan. This is not merely speculative. The history of articles focusing on Megan's alleged difficult behavior. You know those California girls, they're so difficult. Are they? Yeah, they're difficult. Why they're difficult? Well, you know, they write emails and, and they like want to work and stuff. They're difficult. The cost of her wardrobe or her family dynamics, each a glaring violation of privacy or privacy and respect, speak volumes about the double standards at play. The UK press retelling the Catherine story, especially in light of her cancer diagnosis, is a stark reminder of their selective empathy 
While sympathy for anyone facing such a challenging diagnosis is human and necessary, the narrative constructed around Catherine's journey does little service to the real, often harsh experiences of countless individuals battling cancer without the privilege of immediate, top-tier medical care. It inadvertently highlights the disparity in treatment accessibility, leaving those in the, th in, in, in the throbs of, 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 of the battle feeling even more is isolated. This selective storytelling not only undermines the integrity of journalism, but also perpetuates a harmful dichotomy that pits two women against each other. For the sake of headlines. And they've been doing it now for what, seven, eight years, ten? They did it to Diana and Fergie. You know, at this point, I just think the people who... Uh, it, I, I, oh, okay. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. Take it easy, buddy. This reinforces stereotypes. It distracts from substantive issues and erodes public trust in media institutions. Tasked with the noble duty of informing and educating. But let me be quite honest with you, with all of you. This is not just the UK media anymore. So through the, the, the events that have happened around the world, events that have been happening, events that have happened in the last few months, that happened last week, that continue to happen, and still certain media outlets are reporting as if, oh, well, you know, they shouldn't have been on that road. Oh, they should have done this, should have done, should have done, would have done, could have done, didn't do. No matter what you do, we don't have an honest, free press. We do not have media that is accountable for telling the truth for being witness to atrocities and letting us know exactly what has happened. No. We are void of that. Completely void of it. As consumers of media, it is our responsibility. Right? And to seek out non-traditional media sources and make sure that the verification of their stories is the same over here, same over here, similar over here, and similar over there. True journalism should aim to eliminate, not manipulate, to present facts with integrity and to remember that at the heart of every story are real people, not characters in a play. It's a game. It's a game for all of you. It's a funny game. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, funny game. It's like you honestly think you, you are playing chess at the highest level and the rest of us are just, hmm... What would be a compare? Ah, who cares? Because you think, you honestly think you are of the higher intellect. And, and maybe you are right. You know, because sometimes it takes the real stupid person to ask the most important question. Sometimes it takes the innocent who does not know anything to say, that man is naked. That man, the king, is not wearing any clothes. 
he naked. While the rest, right? Because we've been conditioned. What does this go along with it? They're, they're crazy, but let's go along with it. It, it is, you know, I, 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 I just don't, and I, here it comes again, I don't understand, I don't understand. You know, I wait and see, no matter what happens, no matter what takes place, I'm like, they're going to find a way to turn this. And I'm thinking, okay, let me think of the possibilities. And then I'll think about a few, like maybe two or three. And they're so outrageous. And I'm like, nah, they wouldn't do that. And guess what? <laughs> guess what? Yeah. 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 They even go beyond what I thought they would actually go. And you have these people who still believe them. Who still believe them. You have these people with a narrative. I was watching someone's podcast the other day because for some odd reason, folks. I don't know why. But I'm getting now in my feed. All pro... <laughs> pro Kensington Palace <laughs> podcast. I'm like... What happened to my family? <laughs> it's like my family abandoned me in the in like, in like the center of London <laughs> and told me to go hang out at Kensington Palace or something. Honest to goodness. And some of the things I'll tell you there was I ended up watching two two of them. And the one was very, you know, she was she she started really great. I I, I thought she was really articulate and funny and, and, and all of that. And then when she started to dig into the Sussexes, I was like, and where did you get that information from? How do you know that? How does that, how does that make sense to you? If the other thing that you just said is also true. It, okay. Hang on a second. If you just, you just said this was true. So if this is true, then then, then this can't be true. Uh, uh, um, I, is she is she sure? She does she not have a? I mean, I, I'm watching, going, oh my. And then I think I told you folks the last time, and then the other one got into some discussion about um, comparisons between the private parts of, you know. The two princes. Let me tell you, girl. Let me, oh, I guess, listen, I'm in a mood today. <laughs> I don't know, but I am. I'm in a mood. Well, let me tell you something. At least Harry is using his. <laughs> oh, God, don't, don't, don't. Antonio, don't. <sighs> I will not reduce myself to the level of a common no. <laughs> oh man these people are nuts and you know they think we we are nuts they they, they think we are, are are the crazy ones are we though are we the crazy ones because <laughs> sometimes you know sometimes i sit and i go hmm they seem so convinced. And I'm thinking, did, did, did I get it wrong? <laughs> and then baby Jesus slaps me. <laughs> and God sends like, a couple of angels and they all slap me. And <laughs> go, ow, like, wake ow. up, Antonio. Ow. And I'm like, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh man, okay, I think I need a break. <laughs> myself. We are very proud to announce the following houses are full members of Majesty Sussex. House of Garcia.
House of Williams, House of Naismith and House of Watson. Bravo. We hope the other houses will be joining when they are ready. Absolutely. A big thank you to the House of Garcia, the House of Williams, the House of Naismith and the House of Watson for um, becoming members. I so much appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thanks to each and every one of you who are subscribers, um, who contribute whenever you can. Thank you. It absolutely will be helping out with the, um, with, with, with the channel. And being here, um, watching the podcast, um, right, leaving a comment, thumbs up, uh, all of that absolutely helps share and um, looking forward to us growing this this channel even even more as um as it's you know whenever things are to happen it will happen uh, or, will, or will continue to happen i should say to all the new subscribers thank you so very much and hope you stay and stick around um we have podcasts we have episodes that are just really kind of serious and other times have some like today have serious but um i don't know i had the giggles about everything i i trust me i did a lot of editing <laughs> a lot because i kept laughing because i think the insanity of of it all just is is unbelievable the insanity of what's what happened to Central Kitchen aid workers and the response or the justifications and all of that. Look, I don't want to get into to that, but I, 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 the only reason I'm not is because I know everyone here is aware. We're not people who, you know, dig a hole and put their heads in it. We are aware, and I'm sure many of you are doing whatever you can. Um, I would, I'm going to leave in the um, description um, a link to Owen's um, website, sorry, his, his um, YouTube channel, and he did an extraordinary job the other night. Um, he, he amazes me, I swear, he just amazes me, the, 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 the brilliance of that guy, and I love how, 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 his, how his mind thinks. So... If, if you just want to get caught up and, and, and know what, is, what has happened and the atrocities and all of that, um, please go over um, and check um, his YouTube out if you haven't already. I know a lot of this stuff is heavy. I totally understand that. And, um, you know, we live in this world. And sometimes it becomes too much. And when it does become too much, don't let anyone pressure you into anything. Please take the time to take care of your mental health and your physical health. I always go back to what flight attendants say or what the instructions we get when we're in a plane. You know, in a case of emergency, when that oxygen mask comes down, make sure you put yours on first, right? Then you're able to assist others. It's, 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 just, it's, a, it's just logical. If you don't put yours on first, you're not going to be able to help anyone, right? Because you don't know how fast there, there might be no oxygen left in the cabin or the deep depressurization and all of that. So take care of yourselves. Um, I, I know, if I'm, to be honest, I, I'm, I've had some difficult um, days and some difficult nights. It's It's been... You know, you, you have your, your ups and downs, you have your, your, your times where you just kind of go and other times where it just, it, it, it's just, it just sits there in your heart and your soul and, um, okay. Much love and um, please take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones and to that stranger you may meet or may not meet, but your path will cross. Be kind. Now more than ever. Until we speak again. About someone else. When I read 
the works of people, the memoirs of people who have survived really dark chapters in human history, including the Holocaust, civil wars, genocides. There's a very crucial question they all raise. They're saying, how can such atrocities happen? And their answer is not because there are so many bad people out there. There are some bad people, but relatively speaking, their numbers are small. But still bad things can happen. So how is that possible? And the answer they're giving us is that maybe the opposite of goodness is not necessarily evil or badness or wickedness. They're saying the opposite of goodness is in fact numbness. Is the moment we become numb, indifferent, desensitized, disconnected from each other. The moment we stop feeling what the, the story of someone else living in another part of the world might be like. The moment we stop caring about someone else. <laughs>